Welcome to the She's So Right Show, conservative women being led by Christ to stand for what's right. Meet your hosts, Lindsey Graham, labeled the Patriot Barbie by the leftist mob. She is a proud author and advocate for freedoms and conservative values. Brandi Barclay is a powerful Christian voice on Faith Talk Radio, the founder of Power Soul and a certified life coach. Guys, get ready to say it way more than you're used to. She's, She's so right. right. Starts now. Freedom Fighters. Are you tired of giving your hard-earned money to big corporations who use their power against us? The more money we give them, the more power they have. We are done. As conservatives, the best and most effective way to vote is with our dollars. We are also committed to shopping products that are cutting edge and toxin-free for a healthier lifestyle. Next time you need daily essentials for your home and body or are looking to drastically improve your skin care and health care with superior collagen and supplements, go to to www.shesorightshow.com and click shop our products. Get instant access to our favorite things that will revolutionize your home, your health, and how you do business in the USA. Use our shopping link to get $10 off your first order. Go to www.shesorightshow.com. Follow us on Instagram at shesorightshow to find all our promo codes and discounts. Hey, our freedom fighters. This is Brandi Barclay here with Lindsey Graham, and today we are talking about toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Well, well <laughs> Lindsey knows all about it, guys. Oh the, the, the term itself, let's just say it's this, so the term stupid. itself sounds so naughty, but guess what? It's not, it's not really a term. The, the, the term is masculinity, and then the left decided, well, you can be too masculine, and that could be dangerous to not just females, but also other males. So we're going to call it toxic masculinity. That just means you're too manly of a man and you need to take down your manness. Take it down a notch. Yeah. Well, because the the left or liberal mindset is very, it's, it's a war with words. Mm-hmm. It's how can we make this sound really, you know, Worse benefit than it is. worse than yeah. it is and benefit our movement yes and so you know just like black lives matter of course black lives matter right. how do you argue with that statement right so when they say toxic masculinity you know deconstruct that yeah um masculine is having qualities or appearance traditionally associated with men especially strength and aggressiveness oh. um in very small writing, it says he is outstandingly handsome, robust, and very masculine, relating to men, male, a masculine voice, la, 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 la. But then, you guys, if you go into the actual definition, which is kind of funny, um, there's something now called hypermasculinity, <laughs> <laughs> which is, you guys, this is so, I made didn't up. even know this was My, a word. Made up. No. Hypermasculinity is a psychological term for the exaggerated Exaggeration of male stereotypical behavior, such as an emphasis on physical strength, aggression, and sexuality. This term has Gosh. been used in all, so basically a macho personality, um, callous sexual attitudes towards women, belief that violence is manly, and experience of danger is exciting. This is um, the definition. I wish I wish we weren't on the radio. I wish we were on TV because our faces tell it all. Sometimes I'm just like, I can't talk about what I'm hearing. I'm just, my face is shocked. But <laughs> when I hear those definitions, first of all, I believe they've been grossly manipulated. Second of all, I when I hear that masculinity is being defined as <laughs> aggressive, um, violent, I, I actually picture sexual predator. I yeah, I actually picture bully. the way things were, right? The back in the day. I, we gotta go really far back. Back in the day. Back in the day day. Like I'm I'm in my mind I'm picturing three hundred, the movie three hundred. Like it was respected mm-hmm. that you were on the that you you're saying violence is this this terrible attribute and it is in the wrong context, but if you're going to war, I kinda want my men on the front line to be a little bit violent. I kind of want them to not worry about who they're going to hurt if they're fighting a war for me, right? So I'm picturing the kind of masculinity 
back in the day with swords and, and guns and battles where those men were respected. Why? Because they were masculine. I don't want the soy boy on the front lines, <laughs> like with his tweed pants, <laughs> that going, Mommy, how do I heat up a hot pocket? Even even <laughs> masculine men can wear tweed pants, and they look really good in them. That, and actually, but, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. But, it's, you know, one of the things that when I was looking this up, when you think of leaders, warriors, heroes, you know, aggression, violence, greed, and drive can all be... Um, what's the word focused into the right in, it, this is the deal if a good guy has motivation to go provide right right it's different than if a bad guy has greed right um, but they're blurring the lines yeah. right so if a good guy wants to protect his family a bad guy wants to go kill rape and murder they're not the same thing but they're both masculine. But they're both masculine. They both fall in that, the definition that you just read, they both fall into that category. Yep. So you're talking about taking a trait that God gave men, which is masculinity. On purpose. On purpose, intentionally, anointedly. And you're saying that when they use it the wrong way, we can we can play that game. But when they use it the right way, well, no, that doesn't count. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you can't have it, you can't have masculinity anymore. What the left is saying is, there is no such thing as masculinity. It's toxic. Mm. It's all toxic. Mm-hmm. There is no situation where the left says it's great. And we talked about this with feminism. It's great for a man to want to provide. They're saying, no, no, no. Women have the right to provide, too. They don't need to be taken care of. We can fend for ourselves. Well, yeah, like, because no, if no, a man on. is providing, then he's also controlling. Right. That's what they allege. Yes. Yes. And so that you cannot, according to the left, you cannot just have masculinity now, according to those definitions, those definitions, they make it sound all bad. Mm-hmm. They yeah. want to just remove, and we all know this, okay? If you're watching, if you're awake and you're watching the news and the media, they want to remove, I mean, they want to remove genders in general, which is not scientific, but they want to also <laughs> remove the characteristics of gender, okay? You and I don't have to wear our hair a certain way or wear makeup. We can be whatever weight we want. We don't have to work out. In fact, to do so is detrimental to our gender, Because it makes other females feel inferior. Mm. Crazy, right? No one should have, this is like grading on a curve. There's no, there is no expectation anymore in either gender. And this is going to be awesome, you guys, because our next, our guest, Jason DeSantis, he's the founder of Toxic Masculinity. It's a a men's um, hair care and apparel line. He is. He's he's a Jersey boy. He's alpha male. Mm -hmm. He is alpha. You're going to hear it as soon as he gets on here. What's up, ladies? Like, whoa, (laughs) whoa, I feel the (laughs) testosterone through the microphone. He's, but he's awesome. He believes in, Brandy and I, we we always have to clarify this. We don't, we don't feel controlled by alpha men or masculine men. In fact, I'm the opposite. I feel empowered by them. I feel protected. I feel secure. I feel like I can be who I need to be because I know that he's strong enough to lead me Mm -hmm. so that I can be the person God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and to have our our backs and to have that covering, have that protection. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if I arm wrestle my husband, I'm not going to win. You're going to lose bad. (laughs) I mean, bad. I've but seen that. he's got really he's, good arms. He's toxic. But he's so, you know, if that's considered toxic, that's a problem. Right. Because we shouldn't be, we're not competing with men. We're complementary mm-hmm. too. And if, of course, I think an aggressive bully who wants to rape and murder and have no sense of morality, yeah, not a fan. But we cannot lump all strong men that believe in traditional values um, into that. And that's that's not, okay, a guy that wants to go out and he is violent and aggressive and he wants to rape and murder people, that's <laughs> not toxic masculinity. That's him being a criminal. That's him being a godless person. That's a bad person. That's a whole character flaw that has nothing to do with him being masculine. There right. are women that are violent. Is there now toxic femininity? Like, we should look that up. Actually, there might be. The left, have you come up with toxic femininity yet? Oh, I doubt it. I'm pretty sure I'm the definition. <laughs> it would be the same thing, right? If you took the same concept and applied that it to women. That is hilarious. Uh, you've got an attractive figure. You uh, care about looking young. You do your hair nicely. 
your oh they do do they really yes okay we cannot get off topic we gotta have a different okay. one I know, but i'm right? saying that like if i'm i'm just saying that a guy being an abuser for example that's not he's not aggressive and that's not a toxic masculinity characteristic that's a you're a piece of crap to- characteristic <laughs> you're a narcissist like anything but that just because well, i guess you could say that's toxic masculine i mean but really that's just toxic behavior yes it has why does it have to have a gender right it's you're a crappy person yeah you're an abuser well and that's one of the things that kind of led me down that road of you know if we don't have strong men bad strong good men let's just say strong good men Mm -hmm. if we don't have strong good men bad men will be enabled bad men will be enabled by Weak men. Yep. Yep. So, and I don't, let, let's bring Jason in because okay. he's probably. I, I didn't know if he was ready. Dude, he's probably chomping going, I have so much to say, <laughs> I have so much to say, I have so much to say. So Jason, um, Jason DeSantis, founder of Toxic Masculinity, welcome to the show. I, I'm on, ladies? You're oh, on! Oh, he's oh. on. There he is because I wasn't your, listening. Give us would... your best alpha male greeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put him I on the spot right away. What? I don't know what an alpha male greeting is, but um, I, I want to thank you, ladies, very, very much uh, for the introduction and having me on the show. Um, I, 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 w- I wanted to tear through the phone listening to you two uh, introduce the topic and, and how passionate you ladies are about it as well, because um, I, I'm going to read something oh. um, and, and I think this will set, I think, the tone for, for the conversation, because I think it reiterates what you two ladies were saying. Awesome. Um, and, and I think this is something that is, is really the foundation of, of my brand and who I'm about. Um, and masculinity is not toxic. Amen. Brother, it's listen. Men, we have it, to... it, it's, men, it's men who aren't masculine that yep. are toxic. Absolutely. Weak, insecure, little men. They're the ones that abuse and, and hurt women and children. Mm, that's right. Stepping up to lead and protect them. That's and right. I think now our society is, is suffering from a shortage of, of strong and masculine men. And it it brings great harm to our women and children. And they have completely no completely agree. Them. Jason, hold that thought because we want to be we want you to read what you need to read as soon as we get back from our break. All right, guys, welcome back to the She's So Right show. Brandy Barclay, Lindsey Graham, and today we have the most amazing guest, Jason DeSantis. He's the founder and owner of Toxic Masculinity, apparel and men's hair care, toxicmasculinitymens.com. He's a Jersey boy, he's an alpha, and he is helping us to dismantle the, the leftist concept of t- masculinity being toxic. Jason, welcome back to the show. Welcome back. Hey, ladies. Th- thank you again for having me. Um, I hope your weather is uh, a lot better than ours here in New Jersey. Uh, it's always better. It's Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> hope it's warm there. Yep, it is. <laughs> no, it's not warm here. It's like 28 and raw. Oh, my gosh. That sounds like terrible. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Stay in Arizona. Tell us what you were going to read. I'm like, I'm I'm b- b- biting the well, bed here. Like. Yeah. Tell us what's up. Yes, I know. I, I was I was listening to your lady's introduction, and I was I was raring to go. And and first of all, thank you very much for having me. I'm um, so glad I, to I, have I you. Appreciate I appreciate the time. Um, I am a huge fan of you two. Uh, politically, uh, we have a fan lens. Yay! Yes, you know, to politically, our show. Uh, r- religiously, you know, just yeah. You ladies are everything that I think you know. A, a, a badass woman should be. So I, I want to give you ladies kudos and thank you. I want to thank you guys for fighting the good fight and being as fearless as you are because I think you ladies have a lot more courage than a lot of these so-called tox- toxic men out there that are in our Congress. That's right. Mm. Listen, we know that we're awesome. I want you to talk about your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Well, <laughs> you use I, our I'm, time. I'm, Tell us about. I think I'm. I think I'm pretty awesome too. You either yeah. love or hate me, um, right. but I think a lot more people love me than hate me. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I, I am what I am, uh, 
and, and I'm as real as they come. Um, but again, thank you for having me. Um, and I want to start off by saying masculinity is not toxic. Amen. Okay? okay. To me, the absence of masculinity is. Yes. Mm-hmm. This weak, petty, insecure, macho men that bring great harm to women and children and that do wrong by them. Mm. I've never seen a masculine man not be a good son, not mm. be a good husband, not be a good father, not be a good brother, not be a good nephew. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what the left has done, they hijacked the terms yep. knowingly yep. To, to give it a negative uh, connotation because they knew by devaluing masculine strong men, they can do the things they're doing now with yeah. little to no fight. Yep. Because they made strong men out to be evil. Yeah. And for the past four years, they tried to crush masculine men where they almost went into hiding like the Jedis in Star Wars because they were like public enemy number one. And again, it, it's you need strong men, like you were saying, Brandy, good strong men. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think there is a bad masculine man. There's a bad macho man. Mm-hmm. There's not a bad masculine man. Because, you know, all the characteristics they use about masculinity, these are all great men that I looked up to all my life. Right. Coaches, teachers, my father, my godfather, my uncle, all great men. And, and like, that's why I was like, when, when I wanted to start my new brand, I'm like, I want to do something that's passionate to me. And I've been in the beauty industry since I was 26 years old. So we're going on 21 years. I had to bite my tongue for those 21 years yeah. being a, you know, an alpha straight, you know, yep. male in the beauty industry yep. and, you know, politically what they would say, you know, things they would say, like, you want to talk about sexual harassment. Mm. Mm, interesting. I, could probably, I could probably sue 10 million people the harassment that I went through wow. as a straight man. Wow. But, so when I was launching my new brand, I want to do something that was passionate to me. And I don't know when this term started, 2013, 2014, whenever it started. You know, it, it just... Probably as soon as Trump was, was in the White House. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, when, when it, it's funny, it was, you know, it's only toxic masculinity when Trump was running for president. When the right. last, you know, four presidents were men and not good ones, you know, they, they weren't toxic. They were great men. Yeah. Now that you say that, you know? Trump, he did. He did kind of encompass everything. He just, he didn't take any crap. He spoke the truth. He stood up for what he believed in. He didn't cower. He didn't apologize. Like, he was masculine. But, you know, on the if you were talking right now to someone from the left, they'd be saying, well, he was a womanizer, and yes. he was this, and yeah. he was that. And you, this is something I think I kind of, like, want to always hit on now in the shows is we're not saying everything in the right is perfect. We're not saying everything... It, but but we're saying that they are using, like you said, they're hijacking terms mm-hmm. that make... That they're trying to make sense out of something that is wrong, and they're they're hijacking it to the point where people are bowing to it, you know. So yeah, do I think Trump did everything right? No. No. Do I think I've done everything right? I think if you put every little thing I've ever done with a fine tooth comb, you probably would turn off the radio. I mean, like this is the deal. We we all have stuff. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all humans. We're right? all humans. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. No. But, nobody is flawless, and and I think that's. That's the beauty of, of, of being a human. You can make mistakes and, and not everything has to be perfect, but, you know, not everything needs to be evil either. And I think that's what they do. And that's why I got so passionate about it. And listen, I'm from New Jersey, right? Mm. We're a different breed over here. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're very stubborn. We're, we're very thick headed, but we're also very loyal and we're also very warm and we're also very passionate. So when I was starting my new brand, you know, I, this was two years ago I started this, and we're finally launching in December, um, and it's been a, a labor of love for two years. I want to do something that I was passionate about, that I wanted to inspire, and I wanted to, to institute some change. Mm. And what I've seen over the last four years of, of the attack on God, the attack on the family, the attack on genders, and the attack on masculinity, mm-hmm. like this was something that, that I wanted to change. So I'll give you an example. One of my shirts says, Be a Man on the Front. Yeah. And it makes people go crazy. But on the back of the shirt, it says live, love, pray, protect, and provide. And to me, that's what a masculine mm. man does. Yeah. And yes. if that's wrong, I don't ever want to be right. Because yep. what else is there to do in life than, than live, love, pray, protect, and provide? 
what else is there for me to do as a father and a son and as a brother than to than to live, to love, to pray, to protect and provide? Mm-hmm. This if is... I do those things, my head is hitting the pillow every night, and I know I'm going to heaven, and yep. that's my job in life. And if that's bad, like I think that's where that's where I think things get confusing. Like I don't think the left wants things to be right or <laughs> good because. When that happens, they lose control. So mm-hmm. if they have a strong family unit that goes to church, and and the mother, she could be equally successful as a man, maybe even more successful. But it also takes a masculine, confident, secure man to be able to have a woman that outshines him. Mm-hmm. You can't be, you know, a petty, insecure, macho man and have a, a an unbelievable wife and mother who outshines you. You you can't deal with that. And that's, you know, and that's what boggles my mind yeah there's a uh (laughs) there's a a perfect flow in a household and i just that shirt is amazing live love pray protect provide and when i hear you say we're going to go to a break here in a minute jason but when i hear you say that that is all you need to do as a man that's the message that brandy and i keep saying is men are anointed for the role of doing those five things and when you are a good man when you're a christian man when you're following god your masculinity is an anointment. That's who God wanted you to be. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And I know that women are innately, innately wired by God to want a strong man, protect, provide, like you said, live, love, pray, protect, provide. I mean, that is what every woman's dream guy is. All right, you guys are listening to the She's So Right Show with Jason DeSantis of Toxic Masculinity Men's. We will be right back um, to hear more about Jason and being the amazing Christian alpha male that men are called to be. Hey, everyone. We're back. You're listening to the She's So Right Show with myself, Brandy Barclay, my beautiful co-host, Lindsey Graham. And today we have an amazing guest, the alpha male, Jason DeSantis from New Jersey. And he is the founder of Toxic Masculinity Hair Products and Apparel. And we're interviewing him today. We're just talking all about this whole hijacked word, masculinity. We, we love masculine men. We champion strong men we're married to strong men because like you said just now jason uh, before the break you were saying how it takes a strong masculine man to be able to support um a a shiny wife and i think Lindsay and i both fit in that category where you know i i think i think you ladies shine (laughs) thank you and what i love is the word of god actually says that a godly woman is a jewel in her husband's crown and i feel like a strong man, you know, can carry his family as like, like these, these are the jewels in my crown rather than him competing right. with, with his wife. Oh, and I, I couldn't agree more. And, and again, that brings us back to the term toxic masculinity, right? A, ma- a real man, a masculine man never competes with his wife. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, he should want her to shine and she should, you know, be on a pedestal. And, and he should dote over, and he should protect her, and he should make sure that when she walks in the room, all eyes are on her, because at the end of the day, as masculine as I am, like, she's the head of the family. And, again, whether she's more successful or less successful, it's irrelevant. It takes a masculine man, a real man, to be able to come second to his wife. And I think, you know, they use the word masculine men want a woman in the kitchen, and they want a woman at home, and they want to boss her around. No, again... That's an insecure macho man. Mm-hmm. That's not a masculine man. Because that's he's not trying, a man that he's trying to exert he's that trying masculinity to control her. by being bossy. Yeah, yeah he, that's yeah. Yeah, so False. he's trying to control her. So I know when you, you ladies were uh, you know introducing the topic, you were talking about you know the hyper masculinity. Listen, the left knows that that's bull. Mm-hmm. They they know that's not the case. They know, you know, but they use it because they know that they're they're hot topics that they can kind of move the people that follow them the sheep that follow them into the direction they want to go like being aggressive doesn't make you a criminal or or being you know a passionate person doesn't make you you know 
a sexual deviant. <laughs> or being a, you know, no, you know, like because I may be a passionate person, I'm passionate with my partner, but I'm also protective and loving. I, I'm not, you know, going to mm-hmm. go out and look to 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 rape and commit crimes. Like, right. no, that's not. That's, that's not, called not good and feel. evil. It doesn't. It, it should yeah, have nothing exactly. to do with sex, gender no, at all. It, it, and exa- I just exactly. I want to go that's back good to and what. Bad. Yeah, I want to go back to when you said, you know, women can be, you know, I, I, I actually, when I, when I think of the divine order, God first, marriage second, and the man being the leader, the head of the house, I think it's kind of funny. I don't know if you remember that movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, oh, where yeah. she said, yes, where I the word, I, I, I can tell you exactly what you're going right? to say. Right, where she said, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck, and she turns the head wherever <laughs> she wants, right? And it's like, oh the tru- it, it's kind of true, but this is the deal. I, I believe when you have a godly man, like you said, a, a, an alpha male, a masculine man, live, love, pray, protect, provide, a woman will naturally come under him and respect him and honor him. And I believe when we've got this beautiful dynamic of when we as women respect our husbands and give him that leadership role and he comes and cherishes us with that, what a beautiful dance that is rather than competing for who's in charge. Because really none of us are. God should be in charge of the house. What's your thought on that? I couldn't agree more. I I couldn't agree more. I just think sometimes insecure men you know, can't handle a successful and powerful woman. Mm-hmm. And and then I think that's where the dynamic gets messed up. And I see it with friends in their marriages. I've seen it with my father and my stepmother, and, and, you know, in, in their marriage. And it's just, it's unfortunate, but just some people are insecure and some people are controlling and there's really nothing they can do about it. It's unfortunate and it's a shame, but... You know, it, it doesn't lead for good relationships, and it doesn't lead to the great upbringing of children. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, it hurts society. And I'm not saying that my father was weak, but my father was insecure and controlling. So my sister grew up different than I grew up with my mother and my father, because my mother wouldn't have it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was none of that with my mother. And my father was different with my mother. He was different with my stepmother. Therefore, my sister grew up way different than me. And she has a lot of problems because of that, mm, you know, so it's, it's, it, it, it's unfortunate. It, it, it really is. But again, I think it gets back to masculinity and macho, just like, just like fe- feminine and feminist, they're, you know, they're, they're, I, I try to, I lump them into the same thing. Like one to me is awful. And one to me is magnificent, you know, yeah. masculine and, and feminine are magnificent feminist and, and macho are awful. And I think they confuse the two at their convenience to get the results and to spin the narrative that they want. And I think it's bad because it hurts us. Jason, where can people find you on Instagram? Uh, We are on Instagram at Toxic Masculinity Men's. We're on Facebook as well, Toxic Masculinity Men's. And our website is ToxicMasculinityMen's.com. The apparel is ready. Um, The apparel is inspirational. uh, It's bold. Um, It's impactful. The hair care will be ready in approximately two weeks. That's it. All right. Awesome, everybody. Jason DeSantis, Toxic Masculinity. Welcome back to the She's So Right Show with Brandi Barclay, Lindsey Graham, and our guest today, Jason DeSantis of Toxic Masculinity. It's a men's hair care and apparel line. We're talking to him about dismantling the concept of the leftist given uh, toxic masculinity term. Jason's been telling us about his family dynamic growing up with a masculine father. Brandy, you had a question for him. No, I thought he said that his dad was more insecure and oh. it affected his sister. And I want, I mean, if you can or if you want to embellish, I'd love to hear more how you think it affected you both differently. Um, my father very different. He was the best father in the world. He's, he's no longer here. He passed away almost seven years ago. Um, but he was an amazing father, an amazing coach. And it's funny because... I lived with my mother, but was there on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I I saw my father's best characteristics. My sister saw his worst. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I saw the leader, the role model, the, the, the strong one, the powerful one, the amazing coach, the charismatic coach. You know, I didn't see the insecure the controlling, mm. you know, the, the, you know, the everything has to be his way side of him. Mm. Um, I guess, 
he didn't want to show me that. I, you know, I wouldn't have stood for it. It's not my personality. And I know my mother never would have stood for it. My mother would have put him in the intensive care unit. Um, so, <laughs> strong but, woman. you know, uh, yeah, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I call her strong. I, uh-huh. I, call, I call her like, a, like she's a different breed. I, I don't think she's fully evolved yet, my mother. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> Listen, if there ever becomes a revolution with all the shenanigans going on, you call that woman, you know, oh half, half dead. I, <laughs> half dead. And that I still want that woman in the foxhole oh, with me. That's so funny. Because well, and she, she's not losing. And maybe um, that's why you're so, not intimidated by strong women. Yeah. You know what? It, again, it's like people always say to me, "Oh, uh, you know, a masculine man. You know, they, they don't want." No, that's not true. Again, you know, I, I keep going back to what I'm saying. Like a real man, a masculine man is the only one that can accept a, a, a superstar woman, a powerful, a strong, a successful woman. An insecure, petty man can't it, it, it's not in him to have someone outshine him and resentment builds up and then you know yeah you know there, there, there's the something and, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. no 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 forgive me i'm just saying no, there's, no, i think no. there's a difference with insecurity and passivity I think that the that that the feminist movement is creating a passive man, mm-hmm. and I think like insecure and like in, you know fake macho controlling, I think yes, is different, different yes. than like the guy mm-hmm. who just walks behind his wife carrying the baby, the baby bag, and and cooking her dinner and rubbing her feet like this. And I'm not saying serving your wife is bad, but I think that they're like just be passive. Don't have an opinion. Don't let me be the boss, babe. Mm-hmm. So, well, and I, I think that that's the movement. And now if you are the leader and, you know, take charge a little bit, you're a bad guy. And again, I, I think it's all done on, on purpose because like you lady said, they don't want to have gender roles. You know, they mm-hmm. don't want to have specific roles, you know, it gets into, I don't want to get into a different topic, but it's the same thing with, you're not a mother anymore. You're a birthing person, right. it's not breastfeeding, it's yeah. chest feeding. And, and it, it boggles my mind how, the party that champions women are trying to erase the magic of what women could do that men can't do. Exactly. So, you know, so again, good. that's a whole, that's a whole different topic. But, right. You know, Next that's month. What, that's what but, it, the, but it really yeah, is the but, same topic. I think they, they kind of overlap, you know, because yes, they're, yes. they're not trying to create a talk. To- they're not trying to create the term toxic masculinity unless it feeds into a narrative that is bigger. Mm-hmm. And there is, and you keep saying it, and there is a narrative that is bigger. And you are right. It's tied into, well, if we've got manly men leading a home in Christ, and we've got women uh, following that man because he's led by Christ, and that's what we're called to do if you've got a God-anointed man, now you've got this beautiful, uh, beautiful family dynamic that's the way God intended. Well, let's, we're trying to destroy that. The left is trying to destroy that. And so where do we and start? And they the want men? the government to be the leader. That's right. Why would they want a man to lead his family when they'd rather him sit home and just collect on the government? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, and, 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 and yes, so it, you're right. It's, it's right. I go back into the jungle, right? Um, everyone forgets it's the lioness who hunts, right? Mm-hmm. She does the hunting. She's also in control of the family. She's not following a hyena or a jackal or one of the lions that's not the leader. She's following the leader. Mm. She's following the king. Mm. And, and that's the same thing. It's, you know, there's that, that bond and that relationship between a powerful man and a powerful woman. And again, like you said, they want to break it because if they break that, then they control it. Again, they took away the mm. family yep. and they took away God. And now they're trying to take away masculine men. And now they're trying to take away the magic of what women do, create mm. and give life and, and, and nurture life. Like it's, it's bad. Yeah. And I know we always joke around, Lindsay, like, uh, you know, with the feminist women and things like that, right? Oh like, gosh. And the crazy men that are like, y- you've never seen a good-looking or well-adjusted or successful person be like a crazy feminist or one of these, you know, yeah. crazy, you know, LBGT, bomb binary, th- like, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, I don't you know anymore. Our, you should see our Instagram messages. Oh, my it's, gosh. Well, we're always sharing these, yeah, these these videos of these women with half their head shaved off, but they've got hair in their armpits, and they've got... It's really a heart of rebellion. It's, it's just simple. It's so... It's I don't want to adhere a, to the expectations. Yes, it's easier for me to say this is acceptable than yeah. to try to live up you, to an expectation. It's really rebellion. Well, you, you know, yeah. Yes, and, and you know what I think? It's funny. My son's 11 years old. He's in the fifth grade. Very personable kid. A very smart boy. Adorable. Excellent in sports. Uh, he's, a, he's such a good, he's such a good, kind boy. And I try to tell him, listen, you have every advantage and gift in life. 
But with that comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want, I want you to be a leader. I want you to help the person that needs help. I want you to, you know, to bring on the outcast, to bring them into your group, to, you know, to, to make sure nobody's bullying or picking on them. But I guess he was telling about these emu kids. I guess emos? Emu? Yeah, emu. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yeah, He's like, emo. Daddy, they're not an emu. They're not the bird. Oh, my gosh. So I said to him, listen, I said, I want you and your friends to always be nice. He said, Daddy, they're not nice to us. We try to include them. We try to bring them into when we do things. They don't want to talk to us. They're mean to us. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, even at that age, 10, 11, 12, you're getting like that crazy subculture where they're pulling away and creating their own dynamics mm -hmm. and like, and then blaming they're the good guys you. because they're the victims, and then the, the normal, well-adjusted kids are the bad kids. Yep, and they're and blaming it's, it's funny the because you, normal kids. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And listen, you you see you see that now, and it's just like it's crazy. And, and I don't, you know, as a parent, like I don't know, like my again, my job. I got my son the other day. We ran into my ex-wife and her husband, and he ran to them. And as a father, it kind of killed me, right? Mm -hmm. Like he ran to his stepfather, and I was like, ugh. Uh, it hit me. Mm, but but if there's another person in my son's life that's going to love him to death and put him first, that's right? Listen, I'll sign up right now on the dotted line. Yeah, that to me is, is a wonderful thing. So I guess my ex-wife saw that like it kind of bothered me a little bit, or like it kind of hurt me. And she texts me and she's like, "Listen, all your son wants to do is please you." Mm. And so she's like, "We have different sweet. relationships, me and Dean, than you do." So in the car ride, you know, I said to him, "I said, Jackson, he said, Daddy." Mommy and Dean are different with me than you are. He said, but I know you have to make me a man. <laughs> oh. So it's okay. And I was like, how does an 11-year-old kid notice? And I'm 47, and, and when I saw it, it almost crushed me. So, you know, like, he said to me, Daddy, it's your job to make me a man. It's Mommy and Dean's job to make sure I'm okay. Wow. And he said, I said, as long as you know Daddy loves you equally. He said, I know Daddy. It's just different. I said, okay. So cute. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's... it's that's what we again, need. Again, you know, but again, it's you need strong fathers, right? I, mm -hmm. I think I read a statistic, right? They want to talk about masculinity mm -hmm. bad. And, and, and why is it that kids without fathers are 60% <gasps> more likely to commit crimes and go to jail? Yep. Brandy right? has some statistics. She was doing her research right? earlier. Like, like it, it's crazy, right? Without the father, the kids are six, I think it's like 60 or 65% more likely to commit crimes and go to jail. Oh, my wow. gosh. It's, so, well, it's one in four fathers live oh, apart yeah, so from their children more so more de so one in four fathers live apart and with those kids there's more depression more um incar in incarceration uh -huh. teen pregnancy and poverty and then the other thing i thought was really interesting is that 71 percent of all high school dropouts don't live with their father wow so, so that's a lack of so a strong important. man important yeah yeah and, and that again it's it, it's it's lack of a, of a male father figure mm -hmm. and again Right, I never seen a masculine man not take care of his children. I seen some some bad macho men not take care of their children, yeah, and not take care of the responsibilities. I never seen a real man not take care of responsibility oh. and not take care of his children. Oh. And for me, as a, as a oh God, I'm sorry. No, you keep going, keep going. I'll oh. interrupt you when like I, I really feel like it's no. important. <laughs> it's not as, that important. You know, <laughs> what my father showed me growing up. Every Christmas, he'd bring my mother a gift. Every Mother's Day, he'd bring my mother a gift. Every holiday, he'd bring my mother flowers. They were young when they got married, 18 and, and 21. So, But he, I guess he wanted to show me that even though me and your mother are married, I still love her, and mm -hmm. it's still my job to show you how you should treat a woman a mother. And I do the same thing mm -hmm. with Jackson and Nicole. Even though she has a husband and he does, you know, he takes very good care of her and he's a, 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 a great person, I still show my son that, hey, that's your mother – and she used to be my wife. And although we're not married, daddy still loves her. Mm -hmm. And I want to always make sure that I show him that I get her gifts and I get her Mother's Day and birthday cards because I want him to know even if something doesn't work out, I still have to be a certain way and show a certain level of love and respect to whoever is the mother of my child or a girlfriend because, you know, it's not what we say, it's what they see. Mm, yeah. And I think that that to me is, is, is what I try to teach my son. And again, Right. Like real men take care of their children. Right. And, that, and that's like that's what it boils down to. Right. Like it's we're not bad. And I think they make us out to be bad because they don't want fathers mm -hmm. in well, the picture and, and they don't want women, you know, because then the government can't be the father. That's right. Government. Exactly. Government the father can the trample weak. You know, men, then, they, they, then yeah. you create this strong unit who who, you know, is independent from all the government crap. 
and that's what they don't want. And it's funny because people don't see that, right? I, I went out to lunch with a dear friend of mine. She's a very huge, uh, big Democratic uh, operative in, in my county. She's the president of our local school board. We've been friends since we were six years old. We vehemently disagree on everything, but we're great friends. And we were having the conversation yesterday, and she's like, it's crazy to me what they teach these kids. And mm. she said, I'm staying on the board because she's, she's black, I'm white. And, and she's like, I'm staying on the board because when we grew up, this wasn't taught. Mm -hmm. And we were taught that no matter what your situation was, and as long as you have your family support and they were involved, you can be whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. And she said, now it's the opposite. Wow. And she's like, I won't have it. And she's like, that's why I'm staying on the board because there's a lot of kids that were in our situations growing up that aren't striving to be better. And they're all already playing victims at 12, 13, 14 years old. And she said, I will not allow that. Oh, even, the Demo even the Democrats are starting to wake up to the narrative. It all comes back to this narrative that they're building. Now, now not only are you supposed to be a weak man, but if you are a different race than white, you're supposed to be a victimized weak man. And it, we're not raising up little men like you are your son. And again, right? I never met a masculine man that cares about color, race, right. religion. It's, mm -hmm. it's not what, like, it's not what we, I could care less what someone is. And I tell my son the same thing. Jackson, people are good or they suck. That's it. Doesn't matter. Man, woman, Chinese, white, black, Jewish, Muslim, Catholic. If they're good, they're good. They suck, they suck. And you judge people based on your relationship with them. Mm -hmm. I keep it simple. I'm a very simple man. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm a very, I'm not easy. I'm not far from easy, <laughs> but I'm simple. Mm -hmm. and, You're different you know, And I try to teach my, yeah, yes, I am. Listen, again, I'm as real as they come. If, if, if I'm for you, I got you to the end. And All right, well, Jason, you them. are for us. Um, I think you were saying you're and, a pair And you ladies are for me, too. Woo! Ah. Your apparel about line. How about this? Strong is out. men matter. Strong, Strong men matter. Ooh, that's matter. your next t shirt. All right, we got to yes, tell you where to find and, Toxic Masculinity yes. com, Instagram, Toxic Masculinity. We've got Jason DeSantis, DeSantis as our guest. Thank you so much for being on. You guys can check his stuff out at Toxic Masculinity com. This was the She's So Right show. Brandy Barkley and Lindsey Graham. God bless you all. God bless America. Follow us on Instagram at She's So Right show. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue at four Valley locations. Our sports bar in Arrowhead is packed with TVs for the ultimate sports fan. Our Wildlife World Zoo location will have you on the edge of your seat, dining right next to our 60,000 gallon shark tank. Dylan's Bayou at Pleasant Harbor has never ending sunsets, beautiful people, and live music every weekend. And our newest location, Western Trails Ranch, is 12 acres of rodeo fun and live outdoor concerts for the entire family. It's Dylan's KC Barbecue where we're elite, unique, and memorable.